week, Politico revealed that the Supreme Court will strike down Roe v. Wade, a decision that has been in place for nearly 50 years. This announcement is according to an official draft majority opinion, written by Justice Alito. How it got into the hands of news nurses is currently unknown. Well, it would be great to talk about how this is the first time a Supreme Court decision has ever been leaked to the public before, you know, it's been decided. Um, we really need to talk about the actual decision that's, that it's about. The 1973 Roe v. Wade decision gave people with uteruses the right to get an abortion without government interference. Roe v. Wade also states that each state must have one abortion clinic, each state can regulate and limit abortion, and a state can have trigger laws. In accordance with the U.S. Supreme Court case, Planned Parenthood v. Casey, 1992, states cannot place legal restrictions or undue burden for the purpose and effect of placing a substantial obstacle in the path of a woman seeking an abortion or of a non-viable fetus. However, we all know that's a load of bullshit. In fact, if not in law, a few states have already made abortion so hard to get that they might as well be illegal. Should Roe v. Wade get overturned and... Unfortunately, it probably will. It will be up to individual states to decide whether abortion is permitted. And if it is allowed, they will get to decide how long a person has to get an abortion, which circumstances they might be able to get an abortion under, and any other inane hoops they want people to jump through. While this decision to overturn the law may come as a surprise to some, rumblings have been on the horizon of this for a while. This has been the goal of Republican lawmakers for decades, and a lot of laws have been passed recently to make this a reality. In September 2021, the state of Texas enacted a new abortion restriction, which only allows abortions for up to six weeks of pregnancy. This is before many people know they're pregnant. This is before anyone's missed a period more than once. Not to mention the other factors, this law requires two trips to an abortion facility, one for an ultrasound and one for the procedure itself. And most frighteningly, it gives certain rights to citizens that are unprecedented. First of all, private citizens can sue abortion providers and anyone who helps someone get an abortion. Private citizens need not be connected to the person getting an abortion. If successful, that person, the private citizen, can earn at least $10,000. And this law has no exceptions for rape or incest. There are no even distinctions between different kinds of abortion. It's insanity. So basically, let's say I went down to Texas, drove in a friend to an abortion clinic, and some random dude who saw my car in the parking lot, looked up my license plate number, could sue me for at least $10,000. I don't have $10,000. Who has $10,000 in this economy? I don't know anyone our age who has $10,000. <laughs> If Roe v. Wade gets overturned, abortion would be banned in Texas entirely. Other conservative states are considering similar style bans, which would make it even more difficult for pregnant Texans to go to another state to get the procedure done. Some states also have strict abortion guidelines. 13 states have trigger laws, which means abortion will immediately become illegal if Roe v. Wade gets overturned. And about half of all states in the US will ban abortion if Roe v. Wade gets overturned, not just those with trigger laws. Currently, many states have some kind of limitations for abortions and who can get them. Just a couple examples. In Arizona, while abortions are permitted for up to 24 weeks or about viability of a fetus, patients must meet with the doctor at least 24 hours before the procedure and minors need parental consent. In Georgia, abortion is prohibited once fetal heartbeat can be detected with no exceptions in cases of rape or incest. This law was passed in 2019. In Idaho, there is a heartbeat bill in place. There are also other consent laws, which include parental consent for minors, that someone is getting an abortion must receive counseling prior to the appointment, and that state only has five clinics where abortions are performed. And Idaho is a pretty big state. Idaho is huge. There are lots, I think Alabama has one remaining abortion clinic. In Indiana, abortion is legal up to 22 weeks or about viability, but new 2021 laws must require that an ultrasound be done and shown to the patient 18 plus hours before the procedure, as well as state mandated counseling for the patient. In Kansas later this year, voters will decide whether to overturn the state's right to abortion. Currently, the state says life begins at conception. <laughs> Planned Parenthood is forbidden from giving sex education in classrooms. Abortions are only performed in cases where the patient's life is in danger or their physical health will be severely compromised. As of 2014, the state has four clinics. 
Oh, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. In Oklahoma, three bills were passed in 2021 that restricted abortion. One would revoke the medical license of anyone who performed an abortion, banning abortions if a heartbeat is detected, and only certified OBGYNs can perform abortions. Abortions are only permitted to save the life of the mother. A brief note here on the term heartbeat bills. This is a political term manufactured by the right. It's not a scientific one. At six weeks gestation, it's an embryo. It's not a fetus, and it hasn't developed any of its vital organs, let alone a heart. A six-week embryo does not have a heart and therefore cannot have a heartbeat. The, this language is obfuscation, specifically designed to tap into people's emotions. The language evokes the idea that at six weeks, an embryo is a perfectly formed tiny human, and that just isn't so. But you get the idea behind it. The stricter the abortion laws, the fewer clinics that state will have, the right are purposely making it as difficult as they can for people to get the health care they need. Many other states also make no exceptions for cases of rape and incest. The Guttenbacher Institute has an excellent article that outlines which states will ban abortions outright and where the right is being debated and under which circumstances abortion is permitted. So why are we talking about this now? Well, the first reason should be obvious. We're both premenopausal women and we have uteruses. These laws will affect us. And if you watched my video, Judaism, Neurofibromatosis, and Support Spaces, you'd know I have a genetic condition called Neurofibromatosis, also known as NF. I still don't know if I want to have kids, but I do know that if I did have any, I wouldn't want them living with NF. The disease really varies between people, and while they could end up being healthy and able body, they could also be riddled with pain and tumors, and I just don't wish that upon anyone. Um, getting rid of abortion means that if I do genetic testing and that fetus has an F and it has a lot of abnormalities that would cause it to be in a lot of pain, I wouldn't be able to abort it. Yeah, and that would, you know, force someone to have a very difficult life. Yeah. I know that I do want to be a parent, but I also know that if I were in a medical emergency, I wouldn't want to die and leave my family alone if it could be prevented. Also, we're both Jewish, and while religion shouldn't control government laws at all, the fact is that abortion laws are heavily influenced by Christian thought, and therefore it prevents us and members of other religions from freely practicing ours. There are a lot of people claiming that outlawing abortions is necessary to support our country's Judeo-Christian values. So, let's look at, into that. Why are so many Christians against abortion? Inquiry minds want to know. <laughs> Okay, so I actually did a bit of research and I looked into the Christian Bible for this. Okay, really, I just looked at Wiki the Wikipedia page for why Christians say abortion is illegal, but... So, let's see this. In Jeremiah 1.5, they use this passage. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you, a prophet, to the nations I appointed you. And basically, that's a way of saying God knows us before we're in the womb, therefore the soul must already be there. Which is confusing to me because this, like, interpreting this, like, I mean, I know Christians aren't supposed to interpret text on their own because that's what they have religious leaders for, but Judaism is different. Um, it seems to me that they're just talking about the existence of the soul, right? Like, I don't know. I don't understand Christianity at all, and I don't want to. Um, and Luke 1.15 says, For he shall be great before the Lord, and shall, not, and shall drink no wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And Luke 1.41-44, um, And it comes to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the infant leapt in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she cried out with a loud voice and said, blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence this is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me. For behold, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Uh, Okay, so I didn't even know Elizabeth was a biblical name. Is I, I don't think her name was, I mean, you know, the people say that, like, Mary was the name, but she was probably named Miriam. Like, probably Elizabeth is, like, 
Eliezer or something like that. Okay, and basically, Christians opposed to legalized abortions point to these verses dealing with Elizabeth's pregnancy with her son, the future John the Baptist. Were they, like, in a mommy and me group together? Like, what? I don't know. What is all of this, like, prophecy? I'm so confused. It shows that the fetus is a person because the fetus is filled with the Holy Spirit in his mother's womb and leaped for joy when so kick he heard <laughs> Mary. Yeah, babies do that. Like they When they kick. recognize voices, they kick. The it's Greek line uses the word brephos, which is also used for infants after birth, and it was also used by the gospel writer in describing the baby Jesus in Bethlehem in the second chapter of Luke. Don't ask me what any of this means, but basically that's it seems their, to that's me their proof. their proof is that, oh, look, the baby is alive because it uses a Greek term for So it's probably a infants. translation error. All of this is over a translation error. And also there is one line they use from the Old Testament, but let's look into this. Mm -hmm. When men have a fight and hurt a pregnant woman so that she suffers a miscarriage, but no further injury, the guilty one shall be fined as much as the woman husband demands of him, and he shall pay in the presence of judges. But if injury ensues, you give life for life, eye for, an eye, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. But this is a um, Christian translation and an interpretation of the text. I mean, the way that I see it as a Jew, it's saying that if it's just a miscarriage, which I don't use the word miscarriage, I use um, pregnancy loss because that is what people who've had miscarriages, miscarriage kind of implies a culpability of the woman or the person carrying. And pregnancy loss says that it's just a thing that happens. Like that's very, you know, we're yeah. trying to normalize that. So basically Christians point to this and say, look, the pregnant person got hurt and had a miscarriage. Therefore, the it's the fetus is a person, which also makes no sense because it it says a fine shall be paid, not that the person shall be put to death, but that a fine shall be paid. That's not eye for eye, tooth for tooth kind of. That's thing. only when it hurts the person carrying. Right. So, so that it, implies that the the person in this case, the woman's life, is the one that is important in the situation, and the, and the fetus, fetus is, is not is not important. Like. Yes, you should still be punished for killing the fetus, but the fetus isn't a person, so yes. it's not and biblical, murder. And biblical Jewish law does very much have this retributive justice thing, and because it is not demanding retributive justice, i.e. death for death for the fetus, then it, it's clearly in the text showing that, like, in the Jewish view of things, a fetus is not a person. Correct. Mm -hmm. To summarize, some Christians use their religious text to justify a belief that life begins at or before conception which is super wild. <laughs> in short, they believe that every embryo has a soul. They use this belief to call abortion murder, and this is their foundation for wanting to ban abortion. Not just, by the way, make it no longer a protected right, but ban it. The overturning of Roe means that abortion will no longer be a protected right. Christians of this belief want to ban it. That is different. Now, while I can understand making personal choices for your body based on your religion, I cannot condone trying to make choices for other people. I don't eat pork, partially because of my religious convictions, but I'd never tell someone not to. This is one of many instances where Christians equate their beliefs with morality and think that everyone should have to comply. This is, as the kids say, UNCONSTITUTIONAL. The reason this is unconstitutional is that scientists do not agree that life begins at conception. And making these laws based on religious convictions violates the freedom of religion inherent in the laws of these United States. We could also talk about how more moderate Christians interpret these passages and how that's different and they use it to uphold pro-choice stances, but they're not the ones making the laws or controlling the country or the Supreme Court, so we're not gonna focus on them. That doesn't help our argument in any way, shape, or... And, you know, hashtag not all Christians. I understand that not all Christians believe that women and uterus having people are chattel, but they're not the vocal majority right now of people who are being deeply sexist and, I mean, not just sexist, but erasing people who can get pregnant who don't identify as women. Right. As you probably know, the Catholic Church says life begins at conception and therefore abortion is murder. The Eastern Orthodox Church and Jehovah's Witnesses also ban abortions, saying life begins at conception. Almost all conservative religious groups, including Catholics and evangelicals, also believe that birth control is against God's will and forbid it. The Latter-day Saints, aka the Mormon Church, 
does not have a clear consensus on when life begins, but abortion is heavily discouraged. We, a lot of these groups are also quiverful, I believe. Yeah, that's the phrase. For um, They believe that every child in their family is an arrow in their quiver in God's army, which um, is certainly a take. Just tell your child you don't love them, you need more of them to protect the, the, the world from... Mm -hmm. I mean, it also, it's a very Christian supremacist view, right? This idea that we need people who are Christians to populate the world in order to protect it. Like, it's... Right. And this also goes for Protestants, evangelical Protestants. Mm -hmm. But Protestants tend to be more divided in their beliefs because they don't have the central Catholic Church Pope thing. Some Protestants believe abortion is always immoral. Some say it's only acceptable under certain circumstances and others are pro-abortion. Evangelicals are more likely to be anti-abortion and unfortunately, they're the ones in power somehow. Traditionally, as we've alluded, Judaism teaches that a fetus is not really a person. Only when it has exited the body and taken its first breath is it considered a baby. It is believed the first breath is when the soul enters the body. Therefore, abortion is not murder. However, of course, there are individual Jewish people who believe that abortion is wrong in many cases. I actually got into an argument on Twitter with one of them. He believed that abortion is never right unless it's to save a life or in cases of rape or incest, which, but he's like, the once the d new DNA comes together, that's a new soul and I, and, do they understand that like there are tumors in uh, people's bodies that are that have different DNA? Like, do they, do they understand that? <laughs> I don't know. It was he's just like he was just like basically okay. If you have sex, you're go likely going to have a baby. It's a consequence, and therefore you should face the consequences. Do and these people like sex? Do they? Do they? Do they like it? <laughs> And it, that's just a really shitty way of looking at a child. Yeah, like as a consequence. There's a really great tweet that's like, marriage makes babies. If you're not ready for marriage, you're, babies, you're not ready for marriage. And I'm just like, <laughs> it's, I mean, the way that these people view children is very disturbing. The way, like, they're all like supremely unhinged, but particularly the way they talk about pregnancy as a punishment is certainly a take. And like the fact that you're getting out of your punishment but taking the easy way out. I don't think anyone's ever thought, man, I think I'm going to have an abortion. That sounds super easy and fun. Like, <laughs> And he, he actually, I brought that up and he's like, oh no, I know people who use it as birth control. I'm like, no, you don't know a single person who's, if someone is using abortion as birth control, it's because there's no other way for them to get birth control. No one is like, you know what I'm going to do is have a procedure instead of take a pill. I've never met any one person who's so cavalier about their health that they're like, you know what, I'll just get pregnant and deal with it later. But that's because you're always going to get some people with differing opinions in any group, and particularly in Jewish ones, where arguing is kind of a feature, not a bug. <laughs> it would be wrong to say that Jews are a group of safe sex practicing, abortion loving, always consenting folks, just because our religion allows and even requires abortion at times. No one is free of sin, we are all canceled, and God left us in a hot car. But here's the thing. This conversation has a lot to do with what we call pikuach nefesh and how one defines it. Pikuach nefesh, or the saving of life, is the most important rule of Judaism. Human life is valued among everything else. And in many cases, in except a minor few laws, you can break any rule if it's to save a life. Yeah, and or to preserve a life. Or to preserve. nefesh is like, there's a translation, to save or to preserve life. For example, if a Jewish person is a surgeon and it's a Sabbath and the only way to save a person's life is to give them the surgery that only that doctor can do, they are required to perform that surgery. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Like breaking the commandment of the Sabbath and the Sabbath, by the way, comes before a lot of other things. The Sabbath supersedes a lot of different mitzvot, but saving a person's life comes before everything. Yeah. It is in fact required to break the Sabbath if it's, if it would save a life. But since a fetus is not considered a human, an abortion is not only permitted to save a gestating person's life, it is required by Jewish law. Putting a fetus or an embryo over the person carrying it would be a violation of our laws. It has been argued that a victim of rape or incest would need an abortion because the pregnancy is causing them mental anguish, which shouldn't require any further explanation. Like, yeah. 
You can also argue that a child should be permitted to have an abortion because of the detrimental effects pregnancy will have on their body. That someone who cannot afford to have another child should be per permitted an abortion so they can feed, clothe, and house their living children. And those would all fall under pikuach nefesh. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of more modern rabbis who believe that bodily autonomy encompasses more um, believe that just any reason is an appropriate reason to have an abortion because it is like based on, because abortion is a lot less risky than pregnancy. Pregnancy has significantly more health risks than abortion ever could. Just, I mean, you know, a safe abortion. Right, so pregnancy causes a lot of people to go through difficulties and body changes. So one cannot rule out that a pregnancy will have a negative outcome. And thus, and if you think about it that way, which you should. It, it is saving your life to have an abortion. It is making, making sure you don't get sicker. Yeah, if you want to hear a treatise on how pregnancy can affect people, I have a dissertation. <laughs> I've never been pregnant, but I have done a lot of research and I am fully terrified. <laughs> uh, it'll be fine, I have great healthcare. But you get the idea. The pregnant person's life comes first before everything no stop, no questions asked. And since abortion is required in some circumstances under Jewish law, the wholesale banning of abortions affects Jewish people's rights to practice their religion. Abortion bans are unconstitutional from that perspective because it is preventing somebody from practicing their religion freely and fully, not just because the ban is based on religious convictions and not scientific ones. Finally, let's debunk the term Judeo-Christian values. <laughs> this is some more language trickery from the conservatives. There's no such thing as Judeo-Christian values. Jews follow the laws of Moses, the 613 mitzvot handed down by God to our people, as well as the Ten Commandments. I have no idea what a lot of Christians believe, and this is not an invitation to tell me. But unless Christians are suddenly reading the same Torah, I am, we're on different pages. Christians read the Old Testament, which is a different translation of our Torah, and thus a different text entirely. And they don't keep any of the laws of the covenant with our God, so I think it's safe to say that we have different values. For example, I've never told anyone they're going to hell for not believing in my God or accosted random people and handed them prayer books. I also mind my own business about how other people practice their religions, but I guess I'm just not like other girls. <laughs> Nor am I. I'm not like other girls. I have basic respect. <laughs> As we've said multiple times on this channel, Christianity and Judaism are more different than they are alike. If anything, we should be discussing Judeo- Islamic values, such as the protection of widows, orphans, dietary restrictions, the prohibition of images of God. Also, both Muslims and Jews love cats. It's in the scripture. I'll put a TikTok in here of somebody praying with their cat. <laughs> no Jewish religious group has ever called for the end of legal abortion. As a matter of fact, the Orthodox Rabbis Union released a statement last week that declared support for the right for, to abortion. We well, just thought that the Jewish perspective might be useful here. You know, because of the First Amendment. <laughs> We're not claiming that Jews are all progressive forward thinking allies on the right side of history. We're just people. But it is important to remember that religion isn't a monolith. Just because Christians believe something doesn't make that true for all religious people. Judaism isn't like other religions. And, and actually Christianity is probably the outlier in most of these cases. It just happens to be the, the largest. I'll never understand like through the course of history how Christianity became the majority religion. It's so crazy to me. I guess proselytizing and colonialism, not important, not at least relevant right now. The accompanying issue is that pro-life conservative Christians are also anti-birth control. No condoms, no pills, and especially no plan B, which a lot of people consider an abortifacient, but is not. Either don't have sex at all or have half a dozen or so kids, and pregnancy is seen as a natural consequence and sometimes a punishment for having sex. If it's outside of marriage or the product of rape, the pregnancy is a punishment for the person's sin. Which is pretty fucked up. Yep. A child being seen as a negative thing? I, I don't get it. A whole person shouldn't be considered a moral punishment. That, that, that's not healthy for anyone. Pregnancy is inherently neutral, in my opinion. If, if it's a one pregnancy, that's great. But if you don't want to be pregnant, you should be allowed to end the pregnancy. No questions asked. But there is also the fact that Christian medical providers are everywhere. 
allowed to deny you birth control, safe sex advice, abortions based on their medical beliefs. Isn't that lovely? The First Amendment, it, it giveth and it taketh away. <laughs> yep, you can be beholden to the religious beliefs of the person serving you because somehow that's not a violation of the First Amendment. There are Jewish medical providers, but insignificantly fewer numbers than Christian ones. For... Just because statistics. <laughs> yeah. But if we're letting Christians use their religion to justify not giving abortions, Jewish doctors should be allowed to use their religion to justify giving abortions. Although, I think that people are really not thinking about, like, the healthcare people in all this. People are like, you know what? It's not going to hurt the doctors at all to watch people die. <laughs> I mean, we've seen how... They've acted the past two years, so they I mean, really don't give a crap. What about do no harm? <laughs> Not allowing Jewish doctors to perform abortions is establishing Christianity as the nation's religion. But literally none of the religion talk should matter. Abortion is a medical procedure, and like pregnancy, is not an action that inherently good or bad. It just is. Rarely in talks about the ethics of abortion, people recognize that abortion is a medical procedure. A person should be trusted to know whether or not they want to be pregnant or whether or not they should be. They should be able to have accessible and affordable access to safe abortions performed by a professional, and they shouldn't be judged for it regardless of their circumstances. Like, the debate over souls and when life begins shouldn't really matter and doesn't when it's literally the pregnant person's autonomy at stake. We shouldn't have to talk about when someone should be able to abort or what circumstances justify it, we should just trust people to know what's right for them in this highly personal and what should be a private matter. The right to bodily autonomy is enshrined in so many of our laws. You can't be forced into donating blood or an organ, for example, even when it's clear it will save someone's life. Hell, if a person or their kin doesn't agree to it, you can't take organs from a dead person because they didn't consent to it. Mm. By overturning Roe v. Wade, we are literally giving corpses more rights than living, breathing human beings. Corpses. Th th that literally isn't a person anymore. Isn't that ridiculous? And one of the best arguments against banning abortion is Judith Jarvis Thompson's uh, defense of abortion. Simply put, she says, you wake up in the morning and find yourself back to back in bed with an unconscious violinist a famous unconscious violinist. He has been found to have a fatal kidney ailment and the Society of Music Lovers have canvassed all the available medical records and found that you and you alone have the right blood type to help. They therefore have kidnapped you and last night the violinist's circulatory system was plugged into yours so your kidneys can be used to extract the poisons from his blood as well as your own. And you have to stay plugged into him or else the violinist would die. You have to stay plugged into him, hypothetically, for nine months. And the director of the hospital says, Tough luck. I agree. Now you gotta stay in bed with the violinist plugged into you, perhaps for the rest of your life. Because remember this, all persons have a right to life, and violinists are persons. <laughs> now you know. <laughs> violinists are people. I don't know, I find stringed instrument players very frustrating. Granted, you have a right to decide what happens in and to your body, but a person's right to life outweighs your right to decide what happens in and to your body, so you cannot ever be unplugged from him. She says, I imagine you would regard this as outrageous, which suggests that something is really wrong with that plausible sounding argument I mentioned just a moment ago. Why does the violinist's well-being take priority over yours? In that same vein, why shouldn't a fetus take precedent over the mother? Who decides that this thing that doesn't even have a brain has the right to suck the nutrients out of your body? Why does the right of a fetus overtake the rights of a pregnant person? I just don't get it. A person with a uterus doesn't have a say of what goes on or happens to their body, but a dead body is allowed to keep all their organs even though they have no use for them and they're literally just not a person anymore and they're a corpse. And this kind of religious extremism does not end here. You give a fascist an inch and they'll take a mile. We're already seeing restrictions on hormone therapy, transition, and surgeries for trans and non-binary people. There are already a number of laws on the books in some states. This is done with the goal of eliminating trans people. Further laws will end gay marriage, interracial marriage, and make birth control illegal, which we're already seeing in a couple states politicians proposing these restrictions. 
These laws have a specific purpose, to protect capitalism, keep marginalized people in poverty, and to enforce a white supremacist fascist state. Studies show that when people can control their reproductive lives, they are more educated, safer, and they live better lives. The best way to keep people in poverty and disenfranchised is to make them have kids they can't afford or don't want and force them into working multiple low-wage jobs. When people are struggling to survive, how can they organize? How can they demand your head when your boot is on their neck? Make no mistake, the rich will be fine. Even the middle class will be mostly fine. People who can move will probably leave red states in significant numbers. If they don't move, they'll go on trips to places where abortion is legal to receive the procedure. It will ultimately be the poor who are impacted by this law that they have no say in. Most of the judges who are putting this ruling through are judges who were appointed by the former president, Bush Jr. and Donald fucking Trump, who did not win the popular vote. This ruling is a direct result of voter disenfranchisement and the undemocratic electoral college. Not to mention the Voting Rights Act getting gutted a couple years ago. So, you know, fun times. <laughs> and if you want to see what the future will look like, you can look into the past. In The Girls Who Went Away, Anne Fessler documents the shocking history of unwed pregnant people pre row being sent away to so-called maternity homes, where they were treated like sinful, disgusting people unworthy to parent their children. These people, who are often children themselves, were lied to and coerced in order to give up their babies for adoption. Some of them were simply told they had no rights to their own child, and that was that. Because they were underage, or even just unmarried, they were told that they didn't deserve their children, and they should give them up to raise people who could do better by them. Often, the pregnant person's parents were the ones who sent them away and paid the maternity home to isolate them until they gave birth. This was an industry, it wasn't a charity. There was no social support and no financial safety net for people who wanted to keep their babies, and no abortion to allow them to choose to be pregnant or not. This immoral, unsupportable treatment was possible because the people had no choices and they were vulnerable. Abortion is just as much about agency as it is about safety. People should get to decide what happens to their bodies, full stop. And this is a great time to mention the statistic that the number one cause of death for pregnant people is murder. This video isn't going to convince anyone who believes abortion is m murder that it isn't murder and that it should be legal. That's not the goal here. These people aren't worth convincing. The fact is, though, they are a minority, a vocal one, in the United States. About 80% of Americans believe abortion should be legal under at least some circumstances. And the pro-forced birth crowd are hypocrites. Statistics show that abortion rates are the same across the political spectrum. So-called pro-lifers get abortions just as often as anyone else. They do this because when it affects them, of course, their abortion is different. There's a great essay. It's linked in the description below. The problem with abortion rhetoric in this country is that a lot of people think their religious convictions should supersede other people's civil rights. That is just plainly unconstitutional. The only argument that can be made for banning abortion is one that defines a human life as less important than the potential for human life. By that token, every time I menstruate, I should be mourning a child that never was. Instead, I take ibuprofen and doom scroll through Twitter. Don't forget about when a man masturbates. Oh yeah. Any ambition where a sperm is clearly not seeking an egg could be termed reckless abandonment. <laughs> <laughs> Pour one out for the fallen homies. <laughs> Thank you, Elle Woods. Oh my god, Elle Woods, just a, a, a pro-choice icon. God bless. And potential life is what a fertilized egg is in reality. One in four people who become pregnant will experience a pregnancy loss. A pregnancy can be different things to a lot of people, but ultimately it is just a possibility, a natural and scientific process that could result in a human being. Possibly. And I don't think the possibility of life should take priority over a living person. Ultimately, abortion should not be politicized. But this is the issue that the conservative party has decided to use to rally their base. It is a personal decision that the government should have no role in. So much for small government, huh, Republicans? Oh, it's only small government when they don't want to pay taxes, when they want to stop gay marriage or kids transitioning or adults living with their partners regardless of gender. That's, that's when they draw the line. That's when we need to bring in some laws. Whether abortion is right for you, that is your choice. You have the power. But no one should get to make that choice for anyone else. That is a fundamental violation to the right of liberty of millions of Americans. Do you want to do like a cathartic scream at the end? Like, ah! <laughs> um, so, please, we, I don't want to make another video like this. This is not like a message coded video either. We're not like, go vote, because clearly the Democrats aren't good. We all voted. The Democrats aren't doing anything. Protest!
protest. I mean, a lot of people are annoyed by protests, but clearly they, they do work. Because, I mean, look, we have a Civil Rights Act. Like, the policing is... We, we don't have another choice. We don't... There's literally, like, civil disobedience and protest are your only choice here. If you're a doctor, talk to people. If you're a not, not a doctor, help people. Like, there's literally no option other than to break the law when you find it unjust or to tell people the law is unjust and inform them. It needs to be remarked that if Republicans actually wanted less abortion, they would support comprehensive sex ed. What they actually want is more people being forced into pregnancies they don't want and remaining in poverty. For example, to have a domestic supply of infants. That's, oh, that's a literal quote. That makes my entire body. Th that, like, that's like, that is literally human trafficking. Domestic supply of infants is giving like, like, you know, like a, a conveyor belt of babies. Like it's, fucking horrifying. I can't even. Like, I have, I know a lot of people who are adopted, and not a single one of them doesn't have adoption trauma. Every person, and like, you know, you don't question it growing up. Like, oh, people have a happy family. That's the people good. But, like, people who say that adoption is the answer to abortion, adoption is a, is a problem, not a solution. <laughs> not to mention adoption doesn't solve the issue of being pregnant. Exactly. Exactly. Adoption doesn't fix pregnancy. It just means you don't have to be a parent if you don't want to. So that was this video. I'm dead inside. I'm fucking tired. I think we should start a podcast called The Jews Are Tired. We're just you and I complain the entire time. Isn't that what we're doing here? Well, this is, this is a scripted informational video. We're not just complaining about being annoyed by people. We should have like a petty podcast. We call it petty Jews. <laughs> the Jews are fucking tired. Yeah. And I mean, there's also like, I know that I shouldn't find this just as annoying, but people on the left were like, gasp, I can't believe they're doing this. And I'm like, where, where have you been? Where have you been, buddy? They've been trying to do this. The cognitive dissidents. Yeah, so... And I know we have a few more videos planned, but those aren't exactly happy-go-lucky shit. I don't know that we have, I mean, there are some videos that are like, you know, funny and satirical, but generally speaking, um, this channel's not a happy place. We, we need to find some more Jewish joy to put in these videos. <laughs> this is pretty bleak. <laughs> Well, thank you for watching. We appreciate it. Uh, if you're here to say not all Christians, we know. Please stop. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> Donate to a local abortion fund. Yeah. Um, support people who need to get abortions or just want to. Send us cake. Send us cake. And uh, try not to get too bogged down in the sadness of all this. Like, you know, we all still do have to live our lives despite democracy falling. Like, the day after the, the, the ruling came out, I was like, I still have to go to work tomorrow, don't I? Like, I thought if the world was ending the, and the revolution was being televised, we would get to, you know, skip work. <laughs> I mean, you can. You would just get fired. Yeah. Which, unfortunately, we need money to survive in this hellscape. Ah! I Maybe I gotta talk to my doctor. Get, increase my antidepressants. If I don't understand anyone who's not currently on some kind of like mood medication, how are you just dealing with reality right now? Tell me your ways. <laughs>
We're having fun because if we don't, we'll be really sad. <laughs> a person is Myrtle. <laughs> Sam, we need we need that as like a. We're gonna put that in an infographic. Abortionism. Abortionism. <laughs> Remember, it's like that. Don't uh don't abort. Adorbed. <laughs> I'm gonna say this one line. <laughs> no, I got it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sam, it's not funny. Women are gonna die. <laughs> As you probably know. <laughs>